Sports and Talk, Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin.
This is Adam Vanelli of the Columbus River Dragons, your home for River Dragons hockey in Noonan 99. Join me, Gabrielle Denise, every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. for Singled Out, a fresh new take on Christianity from the perspective of youth. Witness testimonies that matter and inspire the next generation. I'll see you there. Extra, extra, extra. God's newspaper boy, Elder Gerald Alfred, is inviting you to listen in to the Voice of Reason broadcast, bringing you fresh revelation from God's Word for today, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I'll have a seat for you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on WQEE 99.1 FM. Tune in each Sunday morning right here on WQEE 99.1 FM for the key for help from a high with Bishop Daniel Hardaway Sr. of Redemptive Life Worship Center at 9 a.m. Hear the Word of God and soak it in. You can join us for our live Sunday service at 10 o'clock a.m. till 12.30 p.m. at Redemptive Life Worship Center at 2265 Highway 54 in Marlin, Georgia. Have a blessed week. Hello, this is co-pastor Patricia McFarlane from Applying the Word Ministry. I would like to invite you to tune in to the Sunday School Teacher each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on this station, WQEE. We will review the weekly lesson, so tune in, I said, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for the Sunday School Teacher. I'll be waiting for you. I am Apostle Deborah Harris, Pastor Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121 Hillwood Circle, Noonan, Georgia presenting connecting the kingdom connecting kingdom citizens kingdom businesses and advancing the kingdom of god in this hour join us each tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m with guests who are sharing their faith business and ministry Hey, I'm Jimmy Allison. I'm the pastor here at Noonan City Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to our website and hope that you'll take the time to look throughout the website, all the different activities that are going on in the life of our church. Our purpose statement here at Noonan City is transforming lives for Jesus' sake. And we believe that takes place in three separate pillars. The first one is corporate worship. We come together each Sunday for our worship services where our focus is on glorifying God. That is the, the purpose, the focus of our of our um, worship services each Sunday. The second pillar is local missions. And we believe that church is not to be contained inside the walls of a building, but rather outside those walls. And we look for opportunities and we have different partners in the community where we partner with other kingdom-minded ministries that are doing kingdom work. And so encouraging our individuals here at the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus outside the walls of our congregation. So that's the second pillar. And the third pillar is our community groups, our small groups where we meet in homes throughout the community here in Noonan. And the focus of these groups is, is simply Bible studies, sitting in the circle, opening up the scriptures, and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us as we study God's Word. So those are the three pillars, and we believe when you do those three things that there's a transformation that takes place in your life, and that will transform your own family and transform our community, and thus making a difference for the sake of Jesus. Again, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you Sunday. everyone, this is DJ Commando of a 45's Affair radio show, where I play all vinyl 45's. You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, noon in Georgia. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this station, its management, or its clientele. <laughs> Good morning. I 
am so excited about a few things. I'm excited about this topic that I'm going to talk about today that has so empowered me. I'm excited about the rain. Most of you are not excited about the rain, but I am. And I, yes, God, thank you for the rain. But anyway, the topic, I am, let me introduce myself. I am Apostle Deborah Harris of Kingdom Connected Ministries International, where my husband and I, Elder Kenneth Harris, pastor together and lead together. And oh, what a joy, what an excitement it is to be in partnership with your spouse, doing the work of God together, both hands to back, but pressing towards the mark of a high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm excited about this topic this morning, and we're still talking about chosen. For this hour. Yes, 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 yes. Chosen for this hour. This is, for me, an exciting topic, but it's also a powerful topic because we can't just go through the day, the week, the months, and the years, have, have any knowledge, understanding of the hour that we're living in and the fact that we are in this hour because we're in this hour that means that we have been chosen for this hour we've had generations after generations after generations that came before us but here we are in this hour of this age and i'm so excited about that and i just i want you all to be excited about it too but listen God has so directed me to talk to you this morning about the help that we have in this hour. Now, let me say up front, we have in this hour, we have always had this help. And generations before us had the same help. But God has also been making it known to me that this help that we're going to see more of in this hour because we are in the last hour of this age. We are pressing towards the last hour of this age. My God of glory. Now, let me share this. Let me share this. I ordered this book, Prayers and Decrees, that activate by Tim Sheets. Several of you may know this, gentlemen, and if you don't, you need to get to know him. He is a powerful general in the faith, powerful only because he allows God, Holy Spirit, to work mightily in and through him. And he submitted to his leadership. Now, this book, let me let me just tell you how God does things with me. I ordered the book and I laid the book down to the side. I said, oh, okay. Okay. I looked in it, but I don't go into the book right away. But then God dropped in my spirit. Um, God dropped in my spirit some weeks back about angels. Nothing new, nothing new, nothing new. But God dropped in my, in my spirit so that I can start studying, reading, getting a better understanding. And so I remembered. No, I didn't remember. But I walked by the book. Prayers and decrees that activate the angel army. I said, okay, it's time for me to open this book. It's time for me to open the book. It's time for me to start reading. My God. Now, let me go back and say this. When I first read the book, when I first 
open the book just to look through it. I was a little bit not impressed. I was like, oh, that's what this is about. Oh, okay. So I put the book down. But then when God led me back to the book, and I opened the book to start, oh my God, God, you know when, you know how, and you know what. That's, that's the order of the day for us concerning God. God always knows, he always knows how, when, what, where, what time. My God, powerful. So then I opened the book and I started reading it. And I'm like, oh, God. Now, God, I understand. Because I'm talking about chosen for this hour. And God, you're showing me, are we chosen? But we have all the help we need. Now, these angels take nothing away from the Trinity. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But they are assisting us in what God has called us to. Now, let me hush and start sharing some of this good stuff. My God, my God. The first thing I want to share, heavenly partnership with God, with his angels. And we know some of the elementary teaching teachings about angels. We don't worship them. We don't bow down to them. We don't honor them over God. They are simply uh, God's ministering angels for us because of our salvation. And they listen to the word that God has already spoken and the word that God gives them. And this elementary teaching, every man of God, every woman of God should know that by now. We don't worship angels. We don't bow down to them. We do not put them before God, above God, blah, 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 so forth and so on. That is not what I want to share. But 2 Timothy 1 and 9, the scripture says, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world even began. My God. Look at that. But of course. Now let me tell you this. And this is what I want to say about that particular scripture. And I want to start there. Because we're in a heavenly partnership. And this is what we've got to understand people of God. We've got to get in the word of God. We've got to get the understanding of the word. And we need to leave a lot of the things that we're doing that's not as meaningful as the understanding of God's word. Okay? So, um, this gentleman, Tim Sheets, let me just show you. Uh, prayers and decrees that activate angel armies, okay? So, here's, here's what he's saying. This 2 Timothy 1 and 9 is a Greek word, uh, prothesis. And it is one of my, is, he said, this is what he said. He said it's one of his favorite words to talk about. The word pro means a written report. Um, and he goes on to say, well, let me back up. I, I read that wrong. He says, it's uh, the Greek word, the word purpose, the English word purpose, the Greek word is prothesis. And it's one of his favorites to talk about. The word pro means before, to set before, to set up beforehand, or an exposition. Then the thesis, the word thesis, in prothesis, an essay or a composition. So this is how we need to look at what Paul said to Timothy by way of the Holy Ghost. He says, before you were born, Timothy, God wrote your thesis. My God, my God. Listen, let me tell you. 
for all of you that know anything about writing, you need, you understand what I'm talking about. It's just like thinking in terms of a thesis statement that you're going to write for your paper. You've got this big paper to do. But what the Holy Ghost is saying through the Apostle Paul, look, Timothy, look, man and woman of God, not just the ones that are called out, but every believer, before you were born, our God, before you were born, he says, I, I uh, wrote a report, I wrote an essay, I wrote a composition about your life. This is what God is saying. And yes, this is why it's so important for us to understand that we were chosen for this hour. Listen, listen, people of God. Purpose, prothesis. God has already written an essay, a report, a composition about your life. God has already said to you, God has all you would be, who you would become, and the works that you would do. And this is why I'm talking about chosen for this hour. There is a great work to do. A great work to do. A great work to do. Now, I want to start there. Because it's so important for us to understand that we were chosen. We are not just living to exist, but there is something for us to do. Okay, now, Jeremiah even says, God says in New Living Translation, I know the plans I have for you. Think about the prophets. Think about the plan that God has for your life. Think about the essay. Think about the written report that God had already written about you. He says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. God knows exactly what we should be doing. And he's trying to get us. Now, God has great plans for every one of us. Your future is bright and your destiny is good. Why? Because God wrote the, he wrote the report. God wrote the essay. He did the composition on you. He said who you were. He said who you are. He said who you would become. My God of glory. Now listen. But I want to share this with you. I told you that we have help. Yes, we do. We have the angels of God that is of our destiny. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, let me share with you about that because all of this is good. All of this is real good. Uh, it says here, an amazing benefit of the ministry of angels is how they assist us. They assist the releasing of our destiny. Angels help the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ to understand their purpose and potential. I just told you what, what the purpose was all about. That God did about your life. Okay? The prothesis. But angels will assist us. And angel will, angels will help us get to that place where we need to be. What we have to do is to first surrender to God. Give our life to God. And say to God, not my will God, but your will be done. When we do that, we're saying to God, God I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to know what my purpose is. I'm ready to do the work in the earth that you wrote about before the world began. My God, that just makes me excited because I know who God is and I know what God does for us. I know enough to know 
that he wants us to come to this place in our life, in this day in history, to walk in purpose, to walk in our destiny. There, there are people that are attached to our lives that we need to reach, we need to minister to, we even may need to hold their hand to help them walk through this life. So, it, this goes on to say, no one achieves great significance in life with a, without a lot of assistance. We need help. Anybody that would say to you, I don't need help, they are not telling the truth. They're not telling the truth. They are not telling the truth. We all need help. Bishops, apostles, evangelists, uh, prophets, we need help. Yes, we do. Okay? We need help. We need the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He is the number one source for direction and guidance. There you go. Cannot ever leave the Holy Spirit out. He's our number one source. And also, we need each other. Much of our destiny is in. Uh, we also need to understand and embrace that God decided it would be the way. God decided that we would need to be angel assisted to accomplish at least some of our purpose. In their wisdom, talking about God, talking about angels, the Godhead provided destiny enablers, sending angels to discover and release their potential. My God of glory, Jesus. Yes. Now, everybody is not ready to receive this. But yet, everybody does not understand this. For some reason or another, we are just haphazardly walking through life, thinking that I, oh, my name is Deborah Harris, my mother is Martha, and my father was Charles Harmon. And I am just, I, I, you know, I'm a retired teacher. Oh, okay. I put those 30 years behind me. But guess what? Life than just being my parents' child. It's so much more to me in this life than just being a retired teacher. It's so much more to you in this life than just being who you are. We are God's chosen for this hour. And it's time for us to wake up out of our slumber. It's time for us to get ready, put our hand to the plow, not looking back, but pressing towards the mark of a high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Listen, people of God, it's time. It is time. And the angels of God, they are here with our help, with our destiny. Yes, destiny enablers. Listen, people of God, do you not know that not only are angels destiny enablers, destiny helpers, but there are other people that God has assigned to your life that are destiny helpers. And you need to begin to call them forward. You need to begin to say, God, send my destiny helpers to me in this life to help me with my prothesis, to help me with my purpose. You need to be calling on them. And not only that, you need to decree God's word in the atmosphere daily. Let me tell you something. When I found that out, the power of decreeing, when I found out the power of decreeing the word of God, I have not stopped. I will continue until the day I close my eyes on this side of joy. Why? Because even the angels, they hearken, they use of God's word. God's word has a voice. They listen to the voice of God's word. And when they hear the voice of God's word, that activate them to work on your behalf. Let me tell you something. 
In 2020, we declared in this house every Sunday and every Wednesday that the angels of God was encamped around and about us and that they were protecting us. Oh my God. And they were keeping us of these. We had no one to get sick to the point of having to go to the hospital. We had no one really getting sick at all. Oh, we probably had a sniffle or two here and there. But there was no cases of COVID-19. That's right. There you go. We called for the angels to assist us during that terrible time. My God of glory. And guess what? And because our faith was activated, uh, that the angels were assisting us. We believe they did, and so they were. Because the teaching of angels tell us that the angels are all around us anyway, even if you can't see them. But you have to have faith to believe that they are there. Because they operate in the spirit realm. Just like dark angels operate in the spirit realm, in a spirit realm, angels of light, God's angels, they also operate in the spirit realm. And there are those angels that we can see. There will be times that you will be able to experience the presence of God. But yes, we believe that they were there. Even the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. And I believe it's in chapter 3. And he tells them that even the angels are looking into the church, the ecclesia, and they are they are in an awesome, awestruck way looking at what God has created. My God, that's powerful. Even the angels of the church, the true church of God, to see what God is doing in the earth realm. Yes. Yes, so these angels are here to assist us. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Now, he says, to see the greatest move of God in history, this must happen. And he says, has led the church, the true church, through a great season of transition. If you do not know this, people of God, the church, the ecclesia, positioning. He says people are being shifted and connected to times that they were actually born for. Oh my God. Listen, if you're still alive, you were born for this hour. You were born for this hour. This is your hour to rise up and shine. This is your hour to rise up. And let the life of God in of his son's death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, God. Yes, God. He says, uh, we are now entering into times that were ordained for us before we were ever born. My God of glory. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I don't care what. The higher ups they do. I don't care what they put out there. God is greater. Everything about God is greater. Everything. Everything that God does. Everything that God has birthed. Everything that God has created. Is greater than anything that man can do. And we are in this hour. According to the Apostle Paul. Who wrote to young Timothy, the pastor of the church at Ephesus. He wrote to him in Paul's day. He says, perilous times has come. But now listen, here's the truth of the matter. That word that Paul gave Timothy was not just for Timothy. That word was futuristic. It was past Timothy's time. Is It was present. After Timothy. And it's futuristic. Even if the Lord should tarry. Before 
uh, any of us expire out of the earth, that word is still good. It is still good. So he says perilous times was going to come. But guess what? We don't have to fear. What we've got to do is to be in a Bible teaching church, a place where you're going to be chased, that you're going to be empowered to live holy, consecrated, and separated from the world so that when trouble comes, you'll have everything that you need in order to stand. Because that's what we were in 2020. We had everything we needed to stand with God. Not with the government, but with God. Okay, that's enough of that. Let me move on. So, he goes on to say, um, Acts 17 and 26 says that God appoints your time and your place. Yes, he does. He does. And he did. The reason you are here right now is because God wants you here right now. It's not by accident, man and woman of God. It is not by accident that you are living in this hour. And even though great trials and tribulations are among us, around us, and has been, and some are behind us, but there are many that are ahead of us, we don't have to fear. My God of glory. You are during the Persian Empire. But guess what? You were not. God ordained your time and place. Geographic location. Where we are now right here in Noonan, Georgia. I listen. If I could go back 30 years. No. 30 years ago, I was in Noonan. Let me go back. 40 years. I wouldn't have never, 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 never. But God was after me. God directed me to Newman, Georgia. And I didn't know why then. And I just recently learned why God called me to this area to be who I am. Yes, you may not agree, but it's okay. God called me to this area. So he says, you're alive now because God wants you alive now. That means there is, there is in your, especially the area in the boundaries of your habitation. Mm, 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 mm. God is, God in his infinite wisdom knows this and with Holy Spirit assistant, assistance, angel assistance, and the body of Christ assistant. He wants it released. My God of glory. Yes, he does. He wants this thing released. Now, the last thing that I'm going to talk about before we get out of here is going to be about our friend Gideon. Our one of our great clouds of witnesses. Our brother Gideon. Listen. Check this out. Our um, destinations in life that angels help us get to. Are there destinations in life that angels help us get to? Guess what? The answer is an overwhelmingly, absolutely yes. They constantly try to connect you to a time, a place, or an event that will connect you to destiny. They can preserve, deliver, rescue, lead, and guide us to divine appointments and ordained places. That's what I'm telling you. Listen, without me knowing it, before I landed here in Newman, Georgia, Coweta County, had never been here before. But God knew that I would be here. God knew that I would marry here. God knew that I would meet my husband here. Oh, it was dark there for a minute. And I was like, God, where am I? 
I felt like I was in the, uh, what do you call the thing? Uh, oh, God. You know what I'm talking about? Help me out, Kelly. <laughs> I was in Twilight Zone. Twilight. I felt like I was in the Twilight Zone when I came to Noonan. And I was like, oh, God, help me get out of this place. And listen, I was in the fire. God was making me. I was trying to resist the fire. I was trying to get out the fire. But guess what? He kept me in the fire. And I believe now that I understand that the angels of God was working with God even then to keep me here. Now, for those of you that don't think I should be here, for those of you that don't like the fact that I'm here, I'm sorry. But it's God ordained. You know what? I know it. I agree with it. Why? Because after I connected with God the way I needed to, everything has been flowing. It has been smooth. Listen, am I saying that I've not had any trials and tribulations? I've had them. But guess what? God matured me to overlook them. So now, when people do things that they shouldn't be doing to me, guess what I do? Overlook them, and I do like Abraham did. I kept walking by faith. And not by sight. I'm not looking at the people who's doing what they're doing. I'm not looking at the trials and the tribulations that are before me. But now I'm still looking to Jesus. My God of glory. The author and the finisher of my life looking to Jesus. Because he is the one that has, has ordained this for me. I didn't do it for myself. As a matter of fact, I didn't want it. And my goal was to leave Newton and go to Augusta, Georgia. But God didn't allow that to happen. So here I am. Now listen. Um, let me ask the question. Our destiny, they do understand, can help us arrive safely at God-scripted destinations. Notice I said God scripted because God wrote my God of glory. God wrote our prothesis. God wrote out our purpose long before we were ever born. Glory, hallelujah. My God. Let me just say this right here, prompted by the Holy Ghost. If there's anybody out there listening to me, if you're going through anything, listen, don't, do not. Try to get out of the fire. Grab hold to God and let him take you through the fire. Because while you're going through the fire, you have something in you need to be purified. Something in you needs to mature. Something in you needs to get stronger for God, my God. So do not try to do anything else other than grab hold to God's hand. And walk with him while he's making you. While he's uh, getting out all the mar in the ruin. Okay? But let me tell you this. It's not an accident or a coincidence. And angels connecting you. I said that about me. Because check this out. Here it is. Our brother Gideon. In Judges, the sixth chapter. It tells us about the story of Gideon. He was threshing wheat in the bottom of the wine press for fear of the Midianites, Midianite armies. Israel's harvest had been stolen from them for seven long, seven long years. Okay? As the Midianites raided and plundered their land, food, and flocks. And because of it, the people of God were impoverished. In fear, the Israelites died and hid in caves. But Gideon, but Gideon, took his sweet to the wine press one day. And while he was threshing, listen to this. There came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah. 
that pertained unto Joash, the Abazarite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. You know, can't you imagine? You're already impoverished. You don't know where your next meal is going to come from. So you have some wheat. Let me just hide over here. And pray. The angel of God. God directed Gideon in that place. God sent the angels. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And listen. The angels were able to call Gideon a mighty man of valor. First of all, most of all, because of the script, the prothesis, the written essay, the written report that God had already written about Gideon long before Gideon was born. God shared this assignment. He says, speak into his spirit that he's a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for the angels of God to speak to you and tell you that you are a mighty man? To tell you that you are a powerful woman of God? To tell you that God is with you? That to tell you that God has seen you? God is protecting you? God got you. Do you know what it means for an angel to come to you and tell you such thing as that? Oh, it would mean the world. Now listen. In verse 14, we read the strength. He had and rescued Israel from the Midianites. Clearly, the angel of the Lord knew Gideon's destiny, his thesis. Okay? He knew his thesis. Because that's what God had already written about him. It was in God's plan for Gideon to rescue Israel. The angel certainly knew him before Gideon did. He understood Gideon's assignment when Gideon was still fearful. Although he was hiding in fear, the angel knew his potential and addressed it by calling him a mighty man of battle. My God of glory. My God of glory. The angels of God. This is what I'm trying to be a broadcast. Chosen for this hour. But we have help. We're not alone. Men and women of God. When you get to that place in God. And when you're ready to totally surrender. And when you're ready to say to God. God I'm ready. To do what you have called me to do. God send my help. And help me. To walk in my destiny. Help me God. To fulfill my purpose. Help me God. To fulfill the thesis. That you wrote before wrote for me. And about me. Before I was born. My God of glory. And guess what God will do. Already sees. He already understands. And God will go ahead and to begin to work with you. To bring you to the right place at the right time for the right purpose. The right destiny, my God, in the right season. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, men and women of God, let me tell you something. What has excited me more? about this message today is that I have help. I don't have to fear what man would do to me. I don't have to fear what they would throw out there at me. God has way more angels out there to help me. What did this, this say? Again, prayers and decrees that activate angel armies by Tim Sheets. Now listen, let me, let me address this because I know that some of you perhaps may, because I, I've heard people say this. Oh, I will. Oh, okay. Uh, let me answer that for you. What I've shared with you is all in the Bible. 
Yes. The writings of the Apostle Paul to Timothy that were inspired by God himself. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, Paul said to Timothy. For everything that we need in this hour, all scripture inspired by God. The story of Gideon, Old Testament, is in the Bible, people. It's in the Bible. And if you don't understand that God speaks, even still scriptures, but everything that God says will line up with the scriptures. I, I There's nothing I can do for you. I mean, I can't help you. I just, I can't, you know, you can't beat a dead horse. The only thing you can do is lead him to the water and hope and pray that he would drink it. But uh, if he doesn't drink it, there's nothing else I can do. But I'm here to empower you. I'm here to um, help you understand that we have help. And now, why am I here? Why am I here to help you understand this? I'm here <clears throat> to help you understand this because this is a call that God has placed on my life, Christ. Yes, wheresoever I am, whatsoever things that I'm doing, and whatsoever place I may be, I just happen to be in the studio today talking to whosoever will listen. Let him hear what the Spirit would say to you as the church, a believer of Christ Jesus. Now, again, we need to understand, I'm going to say this, and I'm closing. We need to understand that we have help in this hour. Get in with the Spirit of God upon him, accomplish God's purpose for his life. Notice I say it upon him. He had three of the Midianite armies and stopped the plundering of the Israel hearts. <clears throat> now, when the angel spoke to Gideon and told him he was a man of valor, he spoke that because that was written in his thesis before he was born. That was his purpose. Gideon, you know the story. Gideon started out with 30,000 men <clears throat> to 300. Why? God had already spoken on Gideon's life that he would be a mighty man of valor and that because he was, he didn't need 30,000 because God <coughs> would not get the glory. But <clears throat> he told Gideon, he said, Gideon, <clears throat> you don't need all these men. Let some of them go. And Gideon let them go. He brought it down to 30,000. <clears throat> and Gideon, Gideon took back what they had taken from them. There you go. Mighty man of that. <clears throat> God says, Gideon. You can do it. And I leave you with this thought. Men and women of God, <clears throat> you can do it with the help that God has assigned to you. Activate the angels in your life. Activate the angels in your ministry. <clears throat> you don't have to be afraid of anything else. Just activate the angels and let them work for you. Let them work with you. And Holy Spirit definitely got your back. There you go. And so until next time, be blessed. Be safe. Activate the anger. the walls of uh, our congregation.
So that's the second pillar. And the third pillar is our community groups, our small groups where we meet in homes throughout the community here.